I started filming this video nearly a year and a half ago, and I hate an unfinished project, so it feels good to finally be filming the end of the video. So let me begin this story. I hope you're sitting comfortably. A couple of years ago I decided to try to learn a musical instrument because I couldn't play anything. I chose the recorder and I loved it, and it sparked a kind of general interest in lots of different wind instruments. So one day, as you do, I was having a little perusal through eBay when one particular listing caught my eye. Lauren from a year and a half ago, why don't you tell us all about it? The listing said two old wooden flutes. And that was it. The photographs were dark and blurry and you couldn't really make out anything other than two blurry wooden flutes of some description. And what the description said was two old wooden flutes left behind when a family member moved abroad 50 years ago. So all of that was definitely enough to intrigue me. So what if I couldn't tell exactly what I'd be buying from the useless photos? The description sounded promising. Two flutes in good condition. And it was also mysterious too. Did the original owner bring these flutes with her when she moved to the UK? Or was it something she bought while she lived here? There are so many different types of flute from all around the world. So these could have been anything. Exciting. Well, I guess an excited fool and her money are soon parted because, of course, I bought the flutes. The starting price of the auction was £50 plus postage. And a few days after I made my bid, I was so surprised that nobody else had joined in the bidding and I was the proud owner of the flutes. So I think now might be a good time to go back to Lauren a year and a half ago, unbox the flutes and find out exactly why this video was taken a year and a half to make. So let's open the box. Ooh, there's a label. What does it say? Flea killer spray. Six Bramley apple pies. By this point, I had started to notice that something was a little bit amiss. As soon as I'd taken the plastic mailing bag off from around the box, I started to notice a very strange smell. And sadly, it wasn't apple pie. I tried to ignore it because suddenly starting to talk about strange smells in a video about flutes would be weird, wouldn't it? But in truth, this parcel absolutely stank. Aside from the smell, it does look like we've at least got two flutes. There was nothing in the eBay listing to give an idea of what sort of size these would be, and here I am talking about how clearly I was expecting something a little larger. There's a head joint. And one broken body joint. Oh, that's such a shame. I don't know if you can see, I'll try to show you. Just here on the joint, um, there is a huge chunk missing. There's also a chip to the body. That probably doesn't matter so much, but it's really important. I imagine that these joints are able to form an airtight seal and this just isn't going to be able to. Ooh, just putting it down on the table there as well. Um, I don't know if you can see, but from my point of view, that looks more banana shaped than it should. I found my jumper look. We can have some continuity. There we go. You'd never know that this was a year and a half later, apart from the hair, maybe. So what have we got so far with flute number one then? Uh, a strange smell? a warped body and a cracked joint. It's going really well then. Let's move on to flute two. Let's have a look at number two. Yes, let's. Surely flute number two is going to be better than the first one. Or not. It's mouldier. Body joint. And the head. Okay, so this is obviously larger than the first one I opened. But apart from that, my first impression is that this is mouldy. This has got some sort of mildew all over the outside of it. And you don't want to know what it smells like. <laughs> you disgusting. <laughs> it really smells. It re <laughs> This is disgusting. Ugh. These are on my dining table. Yay. I have a very strong stomach, but take it from me, 
that smell was just awful. It was making my stomach churn, my eyes were watering, and that smell is the big reason why this video has ended up taking me so long to get finished. Slightly damp cloth. That didn't work to get rid of the smell. Oh my gosh, the smell! This cleaning effort required something more than a slightly damp cloth. I have rubbing alcohol and some cotton buds. I know, I know, water and isopropyl alcohol are two things that should definitely not come into contact with wooden wind instruments. But I was desperate to do anything I could to get rid of that smell, and even by that point I had realised that I had nothing to lose. The flutes were definitely not in the good condition promised, and they were already broken and warped, so... I just went at them with anything I could. That's disgusting. I just looked inside these with a torch. I wish I hadn't looked inside. <laughs> I cleaned and I cleaned and the smell just would not go away. Ew. The original plan for this video was to receive these mysterious flutes from eBay, unbox them together, work out what they were, and then for the fun end of the video, try to work out how to play them. But as I thought at the time, this is going <laughs> nowhere near my face. In fact, I was genuinely worried that the flutes weren't even safe to play. There was that mould to think of, and as for the smell, it was kind of putrid, rotting meat. I couldn't identify it, but it definitely did not feel hygienic. I couldn't stand having them in the house any longer, and so they were relegated very firmly to the garden shed. And that is exactly where they stayed for the next few weeks. The smell dissipated, eventually, and I could stand to bring them back into the house. Then they spent another few weeks kicking around on various shelves, because I still just could not bring myself to film the next part of the video. The part of the video where I would actually have to try playing the flutes. The smell was just too strong in my mind's nose. Over those few weeks that my flutes were in smell-related exile, I didn't just give up on them. I still wanted to know what exactly they were and where they came from, so I did some heavy googling. Not for the first time, though, Google couldn't seem to give me a definitive answer, probably because I didn't know what I was searching for to begin with. Are these fifes, piccolos, plain old transverse flutes? I just wasn't getting anywhere. So I ended up emailing a few different fluty expert type people to ask for their opinion, and I still got no real answers. Or rather, I actually got too many answers, too many different answers. I was told that these were folk instruments of really quite poor quality. I was told that these were instruments for marching band and they were really quite good quality. I was told that they were made of Irish bogwood, exotic rosewood, stained soft fruitwood. Hmm, they're very common. They're really worthless. Oh yeah, they're quite nice. They'd be worth quite a bit of money if they were in okay condition. Those are definitely fifes. Or maybe piccolos. They're made in Britain. Certainly Ireland. No, they're definitely French. Early 18th century. These are brand new reproductions and they should be repaired. Don't bother repairing them. Confused? Me too. Apart from, I'm hoping someone out there isn't confused. I could really, really do with your help on this one. Do you have any idea what these are? Personally, I think they are made out of hardwood because they are quite weighty and they feel really quite dense. They don't feel the same as my softwood recorder, for example. I think the brass keys may well be handmade. They certainly don't look mass produced and they look fairly well done. At a glance, it looks like these two flutes could be a pair, maybe from a set of instruments in different keys. But looking closely, they are made from slightly different woods. The larger flute is much darker and doesn't really have any pattern to the grain at all. You can't really tell on the camera, you'll just have to take my word for it. Both of these flutes have six open finger holes with a seventh underneath the key. Although the flutes have seen better days, they do originally seem to have been pretty well made. There are brass rings on the heads, the joints and at the foot of each instrument. Although the flutes are clearly damaged now, you can tell that these have been loved and played. You can see the threads still on the joints to give a good fit, and underneath the mould there is patina from someone's fingers that has built up from hours of playing, so I don't think these are new reproductions. Now I'm ready to bet that these probably are from the UK, but I can't make my mind up whether I can picture them more as a folk instrument or whether they look more military. 
I am definitely not thinking that these flutes are going to fund my retirement. I strongly suspect that the £50 I paid for them was probably £50 too much to pretty much anyone else, but I think they're two very interesting objects and I really, really would like to know more about them. So if you have any ideas, please do drop it in the comments below. And if you would just like to guess for fun, then drop that in the comments below too. So I set my camera and everything up today thinking that by the end of my filming session I would have pepped myself up to a point where I would try to play these for you. But as I'm sitting here now, the memory of that smell is still very strong in my mind's nose um, and I really kind of don't want to try playing them still. Ah, uh, it's a massive anticlimax if I don't at least try to play them, isn't it? Ah. Uh... I don't think they are really in a playable condition with that damage to the embouchure holes and the warped bodies and the terribly fitting head joints. I don't know if they'll make a noise anyway. What do you think? Should I try playing them? Maybe I could just try playing one. This one was definitely the mouldiest. Maybe I could approach this one. <laughs> they don't smell like they did, they just smell like old wooden instruments. I'm now slightly concerned my house might smell of old wooden instrument. That's smoky. No, don't look inside them. That's still a bad idea. God, God, God. I, I really don't want to. You know when you just build something up in your head? But that smell was bad. The smell was bad. These could carry all sorts of disease. <laughs> I'm going to make myself a little a little lip guard out of some nice clean paper towel and I'm definitely going to try not to inhale <laughs> oh what am I doing Okay, that's enough. I've had enough. <laughs> this one has quite a lot of damage around the embouchure, and um, particularly on the top edge of the hole, which should create the nice blade to split the air that you blow into the instrument. Um, there's quite a big nick out of it, so I'm guessing that I'm probably never going to be able to get a sound out of this one. But unfortunately for me, the embouchure hole on this one doesn't look too damaged, but this is the one that was really mouldy. This is the one I really don't want to try playing. After failing to make any sound at all, I needed to prove to myself that I could still make a sound on a flute, so I fetched my concert flute. Okay, I think I'm going to just about place the blame on the instrument this time. So, what an anticlimax! After a year and a half of waiting to find out, I don't think these flutes are going to play. Maybe if I persevered with them a little bit more, maybe I could get something out of them. But do you know what? I really don't want to try. <laughs> it's going to take me a while to recover from trying that time, to be honest. But yeah, if you do think you have any information, even if you're just guessing about what those guys might be, I would really appreciate it. And I would also really appreciate a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this really weird video. I try to make a new video every single week, um, mostly about the recorder, but about different musical instruments too, and it would be lovely to see you again next time. So thank you so much for watching, and bye! Just before I put my camera away, I decided to give the large flute one final chance to perform. And you can tell I'm serious this time because I've taken my jumper off. Well, all right, it's better than nothing. I think that's enough of that, don't you? had better eBay purchases.